Hello, my name is Blake within the Hyperloop. Today we're gonna go quickly through some news stories. Um, the first being Virgin Hyperloop One um, came out with a tweet, but previously in January, um, there was a lot of discussion as Virgin Hyperloop One attended the North Carolina Department of Transportation Summit about Raleigh, North Carolina to Charlotte in 22 minutes. And as we see this route, um, if you were to take a train, is about three hours, 10 minutes to four hours, 30, or if you were to drive a car, it's about two hours, 30 minutes, um, or three hours, um, depending on traffic, uh, at a range of about 167 miles. So Virgin Hyperloop One today came out with a tweet saying that, that they're connecting at the very top part of this route, um, kind of in this region, Raleigh to Durham, um, with a feasibility study which is really interesting, so that's great. Um, in this uh, news, press, news press release that uh, was released at a breakfast uh, meeting, they used AECOM to help discuss the findings and implications of a pre-feasibility hyperloop analysis, and they determined it worthy of study. And it's all with downtown um, uh, hyperloop stations and a connection to the airport. Again, um, it's gonna connect to rapid transit, serving the um, existing area with rail and bus and um, the regional transportation alliance is really excited because this is a very high-tech corridor with major companies with executives that want to get from city to city really fast um, but also just a really cool thing because they're emphasizing passenger and cargo pods at 670 miles an hour so congrats on Virgin Hyperloop One with this uh, ninth or so state to explore Virgin Hyperloop One technology um, next, we're uh, quickly going over to uh, press <laughs> a blog post by Delft Hyperloop that uh, discusses their partnership with Heart Hyperloop, um, which is the spin-off company that just demonstrated their lane switching technology for their pod, which has never been demonstrated by any other Hyperloop company in the world, um, which is really amazing, and they've gotten off the ground so fast. Um, it just kind of explains why they are wanting uh, to design Hyperloop stations this way underground um, and how they're doing it um, as kind of a full-scale fidelity um, and how they developed the interior of their pod to be really soothing because there's no windows um, and it just looks really relaxing so congratulations Delft for releasing the design um, goals and inspiration um, and as we see in this uh, image you know wood with um, white seats and like a skylight that seems like a blue clear sky in the Netherlands. Um, and this is Hart Hyperloops, same um, interior uh, that they think what it'll look like. And I just wanna highlight in a higher resolution photo that I don't have right now, um, you can see available connections and it has like e-bikes um, as connecting vehicles um, robo taxis, subway, and bus system, and then a, ma a hyperloop map of Europe, and that is just incredible. This other render from Hart Hyperloop that's pretty new. We see Frankfurt Direct, 11, um, 12 a.m. to 12:05 p.m., which is just crazy fast. Um, and it's hyper. Uh, a hyperloop is wheelchair accessible. Thank you so much for putting that in. We've asked other Hyperloop companies like Virgin Hyperloop One if you can put a bike in it. We have yet to hear back. So um, moving on to SpaceX pod competition teams. I just like this because um, um, Abhishekar Hyperloop is working hard and got a nice shout out from a company uh, in a tech festival at IIT Madras. So that's fun, cool. Um, Virgin, uh, sorry, Hyper Poland is still recruiting the team members to work on their Hyperloop. Um, and these are the positions um, in Warsaw, um, Hyperloop uh, production specialist, mechanical. And again, they're doing phased um, uh, for rail and then kind of a phased introduction of Hyperloop on top of rail lines, which is exciting. Uh, moving on to University of Windsor, they have made it to Nebraska and are driving safely um, in their awesome, uh, you know, cargo carrier. Um, I hope if they stop by Colorado, give me a shout out. <laughs> um, Hyperloop UPV 
is already in Los Angeles. Um, congratulations, I'm glad they safely traveled and are not too jet lagged. Stay hydrated, it gets really hot um, in the parking lot of SpaceX. Um, Delta Hyperloop, their batteries arrived. Uh, and as you can see, it's in a very secure uh, container and everybody's like really stressed out and looking worried about the battery batteries um, so I'm glad that the batteries arrived and yeah um, we're gonna listen to this EFP hyperloop of day two Nicholas um, is a mechanical team lead um, presenting the braking system um, that his design team led it looks like they're like assembling everything or something Day two. Hi, I'm Nicolas Falfangi. I am the mechanical team leader of the EPFL loop team. The braking system here has a peak dissipated power of 2,200 horsepower. It's really huge. It's the equivalent power of 20 cars. And it enables us to decelerate at more than 7 Gs. That means that that's the kind of value you can experience in a fighter jet, in fact. This system is also very safe as it will in any case break. If we lose the communication with the main unit of the pod, the control unit, the electro valve will let the pressure go and the brake caliper will clamp the rate. Whoa, awesome. So good job, um, EPFL. Thank you for making those educational videos and the vlogs and making it really uh, simple for us non-scientific people to understand. This is an interesting UCI Hyperloop. Um, they worked with a company, Very Surf, to help align the pod, industrial leading software um, that will manage the interface um, with CAD models, measuring devices in real time. And I think they're using the I-beam and um, this kind of device to kind of measure distances. Um, and I guess that would be really important, especially if the pod is going really fast down the track. So that's really interesting and fascinating to learn about. Um, we're already looking, to, some teams are already looking to next year's pod competition. Um, team Vegapod from um, Pune in India. Um, of course, Pune and Mumbai is a, is a route um, considered to be the first Hyperloop route in the world to be built by Virgin Hyperloop One. We haven't heard much news about that lately, but um, they are recruiting already and that's great. Uh, congratulations and um, they have a really nice Instagram page and are posting um, updates of uh, their presentations and um, yeah they've been working hard and let's just quickly see a, a, a sped up video of them uh, laying out different parts so congratulations uh, Team Vegapod again if you have any feedback or comments leave it in the comments below um, and stay in the loop.